the beginning of the semester, when we were going over basic types, I mentioned first the string type variable. Well, I told you a big lie at the time. I said that that was a basic built-in C++ type. Well, it's not. Actually, it's one of two different kinds of string type variables that you can declare. I will elaborate more on the string type characters later, uh, but we will henceforth know it as the standard string class. What I'm going to talk about in this lesson are null terminated character arrays, but they are also known as C style strings or C strings. They're left over from the old C programming language. You need to know them because they are used extensively. I like to refer to them as null terminated character arrays or NTCAs. And the reason is that when you create one of these, the data is delineated by a null character. So what in the world is a null character? Well, I'll show you in just a minute. In any case, let's declare an array of characters. Well, you declare an array of characters like you declare an array of anything, except that the base type is character. All right, I've called it my array, and I've made it size 10. What do I have? I have an array of 10 boxes indexed from 0 to 9, and each one of these guys is some character. What makes it a null terminated character array? Well, not this declaration, but a declaration and an initialization or some other method. Let's take a look at them. There are two ways that you can initialize the values in an array of characters. The very first one here, char array 110 equals this list of three characters, does just exactly that. It'll initialize the first three to C, U, and P, and that's it. Everything else in that array is just what happens to be left over from the last use of the memory. Let's take a look at the second declaration and initialization. Again, char, array 2, 10. But now I'm going to use the double quotes. When I do this, the compiler will create a null terminated character array. And the character that I keep mentioning is this guy down here, the null character, right here. Now, I don't know what the character looks like, but we characterize it with the escape sequence backslash zero. I usually put a slash through my zero to distinguish it from an O. This character is used to delineate the data. We will develop functions, and there are built-in functions, that use that marker to make the functionality that you desire in inputting, outputting, and processing the data. The trick is that you have to keep track of where that marker is. In any case, when you declare a character array in this fashion and initialize it in this fashion, then you end up with a null terminated character array. What's another way that we can do this? Okay, you can create an array of characters. Again, it's just an array of characters and not an NTCA. But if I then prompt for and read in some name, look what happens. When I use the extraction operator, the compiler will automatically put that null character in there. The elements of this array are AHMED and then the null character. That's done automatically. Now, when I try to output this, the compiler uses that marker to output to the standard out, the screen, the characters A, H, M, E, D, and it will stop at that marker, that null character. However, if we want to input a name, say, Joanne, or a string Joanne, the C++ compiler will only read up to the first white space. So what's white space? White space is spaces, the tab character, and the new line character, which goes on to the stream when you hit the enter button. So the only data that is entered is Joe. The problem is, is that ANN, that AN, is going to be left out there in the stream, and that can cause you some headaches, as we'll see later. Then when I try to output this guy, it ends up being just Joe, not Joanne. All righty. Let's see what happens when we try to use these null terminated character arrays. I'm going to send one to a function. The function returns along. It's called string length. And we pass to it a 
character array. We're going to declare it const because this function is going to return the length of the data in the array. Okay, as stated by the precondition, it says that the character array must have a null character uh, at the end of the data. Why? Because our functionality is going to hinge on that. Okay, as you see in this while loop, I'm going to traverse the array until I run into that null character. And that's the key. That null character there is going to stop my processing. We create length locally, initialized to zero. Ask the question, is NTCA length, which is zero, that is to say that the zeroth element, is that the null character? No. Increment length. Is NTCA length the null? No. Incrementing length. Is it the null? No. Increment. Is it the null? No. Increment. Is it the null? No. Increment. Is it the null? Yes. And that's my signal to stop counting. So I've counted up five elements that are non-null, and that's what I'm going to return. Let's take a look at another function. I'm going to pass a null terminated character array. And again, if you look at the precondition, it states that the array sent must have a null character. And that is assumed to delineate the data. So this is a print reverse. So what I'm going to do is have this function output the string in reverse order. Once again, since it's nothing but a print function, we pass it const. And again, drawing attention to the brackets, that says, well, it's an array, and it's an array of characters. It's going to return nothing. So I jump in. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the function that I just defined, the string length function, pass my parameter to it. It will return the length, and I will assign that to a local variable by the name of length. Now I know how much of the array is actually data. In this case, there are five characters. So I can form a for loop. I can begin my index at length minus 1. Remember that if length is 5, length minus 1 is 4, and that is the index of the last character before that null. So I'll start there and go until uh, I reach 0. And I will decrement my index as I go. So I'm going to output NTCAI, that's the fifth element, but indexed fourth. Decrement I, decrement I, output decrement I, output decrement I, output. And then, of course, I end up with an index below zero, and I'm out of that loop. OK, there are some things that you cannot do with null terminated character arrays uh, that you can do with other other variables, floats and, and ints and so forth, that you must be aware of. Now, you've got to remember that null terminated character array is still an array. So let's suppose that I declare a null terminated character array, so it's an array of characters, and I want to give it a value. Okay, I want that null terminated character array to be the array with b, o, b, and null here. Can I do this? The answer is no. That will not work. You cannot assign to a null terminated character array. Cannot assign to an NTCA. How do you do that? Once an array of characters is declared, how do you give it a value? We'll cover that in the next lesson. Can you do this? Yes, you can. But this is not an assignment. Remember that this is an initialization. Okay, It's different from an assignment. Likewise, I can initialize NTCA to Robert. Now, suppose I want to compare these two. Is that possible? Well, no. This operator right here is not defined for arrays. And because a null terminated character array is an array, you cannot do that. So that's forbidden also. How do you compare two null terminated character arrays? Well, we'll show you in the next lesson. Can you do this with strings? The answer is yes. But it's defined for the string class. It is not defined for these arrays.
And that's it for now. We'll, we'll take a look at a more extensive understanding of null terminated character arrays, otherwise known as C strings, otherwise known as C style strings, in the next lesson.